Trump has managed to delay what I call the criminal insurrection trial by pursuing an argument that a president could commit any crime and avoid criminal prosecution after leaving office. If the courts agreed with that position, that would probably end America's democracy. It would be only a question of time before that would become the inevitable result. Trump is an authoritarian demagogue who has done everything in his power so far to undermine America's democracy with the support of his voters and the politicians in his party, with few exceptions. Trump has absolute control over what used to be known as the Republican Party. Trump is the Republican Party now. The party needs to be, be renamed the Trump Party. Few Republicans are willing to stand up to him with even mild criticism, and those who have done so have been sent into the political wasteland or have retired from politics. The most uh, recent example of Trump's total control is the mass retreat by Republican senators on supporting their colleague Senator Lankford's compromise on immigration after Donald told them to oppose it. Even though opposition is likely to doom future USA to Ukraine this year, the compromise had many of the pr proposals previously demanded by Republicans. The end result will probably be that, that they get nothing on immigration this year while killing aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Fortunately for America's future as a democracy, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit unanimously rejected Trump's absolute immunity from criminal prosecution claim. There is no provision in the Constitution for presidential executive privilege or immunity from prosecution. Executive privilege is a court-created doctrine, as is the immunity from civil suits while acting in the official capacity as president. Supreme Court justices, including the so-called conservatives, create judge-made constitutional legal principles all of the time. The U.S. Court of Appeals unanimously rejected Trump's immunity defense. The issue has not been previously addressed uh, by the Supreme Court since uh, Trump is the first president to be criminally indicted for crimes. Nixon would have been indicted, but President Ford pardoned him before a grand jury could vote on the indictment. There was a draft of an indictment that was circulating before that pardon. The court, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, the the Court of Appeals, excuse me, uh, noted correctly that Trump's uh, quote alleged conduct conflicts with his constitutional mandate to enforce the laws governing the process of electing the new president. End of quote. Court further noted that Trump's uh, alleged efforts to remain in power after losing the 2020 elections were, if proven, a, quote, unprecedented assault on the structure of government. This is another quote. We cannot accept former President Trump's claim that a president has unbounded authority to commit crimes that would neutralize the most fundamental check on executive power the recognition and implementation of electric election results, end of quote. And ultimately, that's what Trump was attempting to undermine. Trump will appeal to the Supreme Court where the Republican justices may give him a more favorable, favorable audience. The appeal process to the Supreme Court is so slow that a decision is unlikely before the election unless the court orders expedited scheduling for briefs and oral argument. Even with an expedited schedule, there may be insufficient time to have a trial before the election. Delay is what Trump wants. Sufficient delay that he could avoid, avoid a trial before the election and then terminate the federal cases by ordering his new attorney general to fire Jack Smith. The willingness of, of a Trump-appointed Attorney General to fire Jack Smith is the most important job qualification from Trump's perspective. 
The main reason, in my opinion, that Trump is running for president is that it is the most viable strategy for him to stay out of prison.